How is it that the supplements that you are taking aren't doing anything for you? So many people rave about them, but you don't feel a thing. Today, I'm gonna to cover five major reasons on why the supplements that you're taking may not be benefiting you. So stay tuned as you don't wanna miss this important info. And what's up guys, CW here from Considerate Health, and today we're talking supplements. Now supplements are a multi-billion dollar industry in the US alone, and it's estimated about three out of every four American take some form of supplements. But why do they often seem to disappoint and fail? Well, let's jump right in and to discuss some of the major reasons. The first reason is that there's little to no research backing that specific ingredient or supplement that you are taking. Now, this is all too true of so many of the supplements out there nowadays. Certainly not true of all of them, but a lot of them. And the nutraceutical companies, like a lot of the pharmaceuticals, they are experts at marketing and human psychology, and they know what they can sell people is hope. Hope for uh, improvement in their health. Hope in something that they take will improve how they feel, how, what they look like. And so oftentimes they know that what draws people in are testimonials. So you often see people say, oh, I used to feel this way before taking the supplements. And after this, I felt so much better, right? From a satisfied customer. Now, we as humans resonate with stories. And so that often convinces us. But sometimes uh, companies do actually put one or two published studies out on their website, uh, especially if it's a proprietary product. Now, I would say with that, you just have to look at the study to make sure is it financially funded by that company? Um, or perhaps it's a very small study and you can't extrapolate it to the general population. Or oftentimes it may just be a rat or mice study, which again, we have to be careful of extrapolating. Now to be balanced, I believe there are herbs and supplements out there that are safe and efficacious, but simply don't have the research studies backing them yet simply because individuals or organizations or companies are not doing the studies because there is no financial incentive for them to do so. Now putting the research issue out of the equation, the second reason why your supplement may not be working the way you want it to is because it doesn't contain the ingredients you think it has. Say what? That's right. Unfortunately, the supplement industry in the United States is not very well regulated. And so a lot of independent organizations like Consumer Reports, which have gone and investigated, have found that over the shelf supplements, some of the companies contain little to none of the active ingredient that it purports to have. No wonder people say it doesn't work for them when they try those supplements. Now, what's worse is oftentimes some of these supplements contain contaminants um, of impurities or they contain more of the active ingredient or they even contain traces of pharmaceutical medications. Now that's scary. So it's so important to buy a supplement from a quality supplement company. Those that are trying to save money, totally understandable, but I would argue, are you really saving money if you can't even be sure that it contains what you're paying for? Now the third point is that you may be getting an ineffective form of your supplement. What do I mean by that? Well, basically for a supplement to be effective, A, it has to be absorbed properly, and B, it has to be turned into a form that your body can actually utilize, uh, or oftentimes known as an activated form. So let's illustrate this by example. Turmeric, CoQ10 are two supplements that people take a lot of in this country and they're very popular. But notoriously, both of them are actually very hard to absorb from the gut into our bodies. And so if you can't just buy any old form over the body, expect to have the results you want it to have. So that is very important in terms of absorption. Now let's take another classic example, which is vitamin B12. If you look at the back of your bottle, it might say cyanocobalamin. Now cyanocobalamin is the cheap and the inactive form of B12. Uh, and oftentimes people take that hoping to see big results, but they may not because they may have a difficulty converting it into an activated form. So to help those people, oftentimes it's better to buy the activated form, which is known as methylcobalamin or oftentimes adenosylcobalamin. So, I could say this about the same with vitamin D3 versus vitamin D2. We could talk about the eight different forms actually of vitamin E, uh, the different forms of magnesium. So the point of all this is that basically the form does matter. So whether we're talking capsules or tablets, liquids, uh, liposoma forms, you should do your research carefully because that may be the determining factor of how effective your supplement is. 
Now the fourth reason why you may not be getting the benefit from your supplement is that you're not taking it properly. What do you mean? I just take the dose written on the bottle. Well, that may be true, but sometimes the dose has to be adjusted. So for example, melatonin, classic one that people take for sleep. People take one and sometimes they feel drowsy on it and they say, I can't handle melatonin. Well, my question oftentimes is how much are you taking? Because the tablets sold over the counter sometimes can range from 300 micrograms all the way up to 20 milligrams. So the range is so big. And so someone taking that much, let's say on the higher range may need to decrease it. And more is not always better. Now, sometimes more is better. So for example, you have a acute gastric upset or a gastroenteritis and you, you normally take probiotics. Well, you may need to double up or even triple up. Or let's say you hurt yourself and sprained your ankle and you normally take turmeric, highly bioavailable form by the way. And for those few days, maybe you have to double or triple that as well just to improve the inflammation modulation. Now besides dosage, duration also matters. So oftentimes people take a certain supplement and after one or two weeks they say, oh, this supplement is not working for me. Well, unfortunately, a lot of nutraceuticals take a lot longer than pharmaceutical drugs. So one has to be patient and again, depends on the condition. So someone that's dealing with chronic gut issues again, for example, I wouldn't expect them to have a gut healing in two, three weeks. It may take two months, six months, uh, even longer. And the same could be said about detoxification. Let's say you have a heavy toxic load and you're trying to detoxify from mycotoxins or from heavy metals. This process can take six months, a year, even more. Now admittedly, if you're not feeling any different whatsoever within a month or two of a certain supplement, I think it's a good idea to talk to your healthcare provider to make sure something doesn't have to be adjusted or something's not being missed. The fifth reason why your supplement may not be working for you is because that is simply is not addressing the underlying cause. Now, a lot of people criticize the pharmaceutical industry for the pill for the ill approach, as if a medication by itself is gonna solve a chronic health issue like diabetes or hypertension. And, but unfortunately, a lot of people that are more holistically oriented fall into the same approach, but instead of using a medical drug, they use a supplement or supplements. Now, for example, someone has hair loss. We say, oh, take biotin. Or, oh, you're not sleeping well? Melatonin. Or your immune system's kind of uh, lackluster, so let's just have you take vitamin C and zinc, and that should boost your immune system. Now, I'm not denying that all those things I just said may actually legitimately help, but sometimes it doesn't because it's not addressing the whole picture. So, for example, the hair loss, I have rarely met anybody whose hair loss is primarily because of biotin deficiency and it was solved by biotin supplementation. I would ask them, let's check your thyroid status, let's check your iron status, how's your stress? Or for example, the sleep, I would look more into their sleep hygiene. Do they have screen time? Are they having a consistent sleep schedule? Are they using stimulants like coffee too late in the day? Do they have sleep apnea? Do they have blood sugar imbalances that are waking them at night? So oftentimes it's not just a melatonin issue or their immune system. You would often have to explore more of, are they exercising regularly? Are they taking care of their stress again? Um, all those different things. So again, you can see a supplement doesn't just cure all. We have to address, again, looking at the whole cause. And I would encourage anybody here that this resonates with to make sure you have a healthcare provider that uh, is interested in this more holistic approach and integrative approach and functional medicine approach. So there you have it. Now, which one of these five reasons surprised you the most or resonated with you? Leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. But until next time, be well.